St. Paul is, is a real nice place. At one time, it's, you know, it's like other mountain towns, you know, it's sort of in a decline right now, but we're working to get it to come back. But at one time, it was just like the hub of the world, you know. It was an easy drive for folks to come and to shop. You could buy fine jewelry, you could buy um, flowers, you could buy lingerie, you could buy the finest shoes that you could find in New York City. And so people came here and shopped for all their hardware, their groceries and everything. It was a big booming town at one time and uh, a nearby Daint, that was a coal mining town, had about 12 nationalities in it at 4,500 people, the biggest community in the history of Russell County. We have about 1,000 souls in this little bitty valley in the poor Appalachian Mountains, and you have to all pull together. We're trying our best to use the natural assets that we have here to transition the economy more and more away from coal, which has been depleted. Wet seasons, this town really took a lot of damage, and many times lots of the town was underwater, and even the bridge coming into town. But out of that came a lot of the things we have, like our Oxbow Lake, which to me is a great example of something for family, and kids, and gathering places. And uh, so, you know, right here running through our town is the Clinch River, and there's things for youngsters, there's fishing, hunting, and that's, that's why we carry a lot of the things we do because we like to see families get outside and do things together. I think ecotourism and, and just uh, general tourism is what's gonna save this area of the country. And I'm so glad to see some of that stuff starting to happen now with the Clinch River, with the ATV trails and stuff that are popping up just about everywhere. The ATV trails are open. That is over 100 miles of trails on abandoned mine lands that has been eased to spearhead trails. And we have found that that has been an explosion of sorts of folks who want to come here and ride and have fun. That's become a big thing. They come up here for the ATV uh, trails, you know. They go around the strip jobs. And see, we've got all, all of this between here and St. Paul is one big strip job. And I'm pleased to see it because it's laid fallow all these years, you know, since the, the mines have pulled out. We got the Clinch River, the most biologically diverse ecosystem in continental North America, runs through the middle of town. We have Sugar Hill, which is a nearby piece of property that joins the town. That was an attempted French settlement from 1794. Still has some remains of the building that was there at one time. We have Lake Estanoa which has become a nationally acclaimed, ecology-centered, student-based legacy project handed from one student generation to the next, and it's won all kinds of national and regional and state awards. The lake is home to a lot of wild critters, a lot of flora and fauna, and it's home to a lot of kids. Over the last 15 years, we've had kids come down here and find peace find homes that they don't have, find acceptance, and if you're religious, find God. When you work on something and your sweat goes into the ground, it becomes yours. Place-based education is so valuable because the kids buy into it. It is their place. They're learning about their place. They're improving their place. I think when you're poor, like we have been in this part of the country, um, you cherish what you have and you take care of what you have. It's not like it belongs to somebody else and I'm going to use it and abuse it. God's given it to us and we're going to take care of it and hand it down to the next generation. There's wonderful bands around here. I mean, there's I think just about every holler around here has got somebody that plays, you know, so I don't care where you go, you're going to find somebody that you can play with or listen to. 
So the, the music's a big thing in this area. It's not a spectator sport around here. Everybody takes a little part in something. You know, but of course, there are people that's not talented, that there are listeners, and then there are musicians. And, and you have to have both of them. You've got to have listeners and musicians. Jim and Jesse McReynolds, you know, they just from across the river over about three miles down. And of course, Carter and Ralph Stanley, they were born and raised upon Caney Ridge, about 11 or 12 miles up on the hill of her. And they were probably the most prominent musicians that came out of our area. On a tree to raise up this of course, Mac Wiseman, he lived in St. Paul for a while, and we had all kinds of musicians passing through. They credit the Big Bang thing happening over in Bristol, you know, but the gunpowder came from over here. <laughs> my ancestors are from this area and my husband's. I feel their presence, it's kind of awesome, you know. I first started making the dolls by dyeing the shucks for Mother Marshall. She had started making them in the 40s. I mean, there wasn't any of them that she couldn't do. Her designs, of course, were all original and a lot of them I've adapted to my own. My style of dolls is like Mother Marshall's. Uh, it's not just a stick doll. It, I try to give them the, the life that she did. If it lays in the bucket, I sell it as a bucket. Of course, half of them fall off and out through the door. I think the farmer's market's been a big success. When it first started out, it was very small. It's gradually grown. We've got the nice little pavilion down there now, so to speak. That's being utilized for other things other than the farmer's market. I know our library system's had two programs there called Cooks and Books. We'll just let that lamb shoulder finish up while we're doing that. I think the farmer's market has been a big boost. It's getting farmers in here, people enjoying a little bit of education. Uh, Team Estenoa goes down and we'll do mussels in the creek. And it's just a really fun thing to do, but again, I think it's building community as much or more than economics. And that's the most important thing. You know, you can't eat a dollar bill. When somebody gives you a loaf of bread, that's a biggie. St. Paul has more historical buildings that are still intact than any other town in far southwest Virginia. So we have a lot of potential here to become a historic district town. I think St. Paul's getting ready to burst open with some stuff because we've got the old Lyric Theater building and we're getting that renovated back. We think the theater has great potential for a performance theater. We appreciate the fact that someone thinks enough of us to come and give us their business because there are literally tens of thousands of places to do business, even from your living room. And so, uh, you know, our, our customers are our business and they're our friends. Money is not enough to fix any building any town, any community. The community has to have the heart. We have a rich history, we have the river, we have trails, and a multitude of people that never gave up.